I'm going to illustrate how to uh, modify a knowledge component model in DataShop. I'm going to go to this geometry area uh, data set here, my favorite data set, uh, and uh, click on learning curve. Uh, actually, I could have kicked, clicked on KC models instead. Uh, either way, it would work. And there's KC models. Uh, and I see my list of, of KC models. But I actually want to inspect one of these models before I modify it. So I'm going to go back to line graph, click all data. And what we're going to do is pick one of these, one of the earlier models. Actually, let's pick the original one that was in this uh, geometry cognitive tutor when it was uh, delivered and this data was collected. Original here. Where did original go? Yep. Uh, and I'm going to get my overall learning curve. And then down below here, I can see a bunch of other learning curves. Uh, I might notice, for instance, that there are three different knowledge components related to trapezoid. Finding the trapezoid area, that's when you're given both of the bases and the height. Finding the trapezoid base, where you're given the height, one of the bases, the area, uh, and you need to find the other base. And height, you're given two bases in the area and find the height. Maybe students are transferring across all three of those and that there's really just one knowledge component instead of three. So I want to explore that possibility by exporting the current that model and modifying it and then seeing if we get a better fit. So I'm going to go uh, here and I see my original down here. I'm going to say uh, export and I get a menu of existing models to select from and originals here. I'll click export that and uh, DataShop will give me some feedback uh, as it's creating this file for me to edit. It's going to be a, a, a table uh, file that uh, is, uh, um, I believe, comma delimited and uh, is easily importable in, into uh, Excel. Maybe it's tab delimited. Either way, when you load it up in Excel, things go pretty smoothly. Uh, and what I'll see there in that file is Every step in every problem will be a single row in that data set, and that'll allow it'll show me how each of those unique steps has been tagged in that original model that I selected. And uh, then uh, I can retag those. Okay, so here's my file. I'm going to save it uh, to, oh, let's see, I think I have a nice data shop folder here. Lots of data shop folders here. Um, where's my geometry area folder? Let's save it there. And then I'm going to open it uh, in, and if I open it in a text file, it looks like that. But I actually want to open it in Excel. I'll go over here and open up Excel. Uh, and when Excel opens, I can, you know, look at this file here. Uh, uh, let's see. Open. Uh, that was in Data Shop Geometry Area. Was this text file most recently modified? And here, this is the import text import wizard in Excel. And I can click through this and check things here, see that everything looks OK. See, one thing that you sometimes can happen in these imports is that uh, like fractions can end up looking like dates, and that'd be something to watch for. And then you might want to change the type. But usually, it's pretty straightforward. Um, and boom, we've got that file now and I'm going to use a split screen in this Excel file because I like to be able to scroll over to the right. Here's my uh, KC original model and in this column Q and here's a new column that's got nothing in it at the moment. Uh, let me just pull this over here so that's more clear. The first thing I'm going to do uh, is I'm going to copy the original model's contents into that one. I'm going to do a uh, another split screen this way. So I can shift click down here, do a keystroke copy and paste. 
And that would, that's a, basically the new model is completely unchanged, but I'll change it in a second. I'm going to call it uh, orig uh, trap merge. And I'm going to use the filter tool in Excel, uh, data filter, auto filter, so that I can select in this original model column a custom filter to just get the three that I want. I want it equal to trapezoid area or trapezoid side, oops, that's parallelogram side, trapezoid face, uh, and uh, I'll do those two first. Uh, so they're just three skills. I'm going to call them all just plain trapezoids. So I'm going to delete that, copy and paste it into those other three places. Now I'm going to find the trapezoid height one that I didn't change yet. Change that to just plain trapezoid. Uh, and now I've got my new PC model. I'll show all here. And we can see if I select this that there's no there's fewer distinctions here. There's just trapezoid in this column. And in this column, we have the three different versions of trapezoid. So that's a sanity check. So I'm going to save this file. Um, just make sure that it's saved. I'll, I'll close it. Uh, yes, save. Save once again. And now I'm going to go and import it into back into Data Shop. So we see import here, step two. Uh, I need to browse to get to that file. Uh, and it was in this uh, Data Shop data sets, geometry area. Uh, I'm going to sort by modified so I have that new one right here and open it and then I'll get feedback on the process after I click verify here uploading file uh, KC model original already exists you don't own this model use this model name instead do I want to change it no I can skip it because I don't need to re-enter that that one, original one that's already there so click skip and now it's saying uh, if the information above is correct I'm importing new model orig trap merge it is then I can it import. Good. Beginning insertion process, processing file, working my way through it. So once it comes up here, it's going to show up in this list. And this list of KC models here is sorted currently by the AIC score. And hopefully what we'll see is that this new model uh, does a little bit better job of fitting the data such that its AIC score is lower and it'll appear up above the other one in this list. So it finished Processing the file, it said there's 140 rows in the file. Um, that sounds right. I think there are 139 individual steps and one row for the header. So that looks right. And now it's building reporting tables. Um, and uh, note this may take a very long time depending on the size of your data set. So this is a relatively small data set, so it shouldn't take too long. But if you have a big data set, this might be a good time to go get a cup of coffee. Uh, and uh, come back later. Um, uh, while we're waiting, um, you can see that this original model had 15 KCs. We, we took three of them and made it into one. So down three is 12, but up one is 13. So the new model should have 13. You can see some, there are some other models that have 13 KCs here. We should see that the number of observations stays the same. Um, it's important that you're labeling the same number of uh, individual student steps. Uh, otherwise the comparisons won't make sense. So comparing this model, for instance, that's labeling a few more of the steps uh, doesn't make much sense to compare to the other ones. Uh, so now we're 28% through building those reporting tables, 42%, 57, yeah, we're getting there. Um, these other guys here are different metrics of evaluation. AIC and BIC are computed directly from the data set where there's uh, both combines both the fit and uh, number of parameters. The more parameters in the model, in other words, the more KCs, the, the bigger this uh, number is going to be, all other things equal. Uh, but just because there's a lot doesn't mean it's a bad fit, but uh, uh, better get a good fit for when you add more uh, parameters. 
Uh, BIC is more harsh with respect to penalizing extra parameters, as is reflected, for instance, by this guy being such a big number for that big number of KCs. And then there's different versions of cross-validation, um, and uh, we can uh, look at those two. Those involve, uh, I believe it's a tenfold, or is it a threefold cross-validation? You can always go click on help here to find out. Uh, your new model is ready for use. Okay, great. Let's click refresh now. Um, and indeed, a ridge trap merge is there. 13 KCs as anticipated. The number of observations is the same. That's good. The AIC is slightly smaller. Yay, the BIC is smaller. Uh, root mean squared error is better. So it looks great. Um, so we have a little success in modifying a KC model. We can go back to the line graph display, if we like, and uh, and see uh, how how the contrast might look. Um, if, for instance, we pick our new model, original. Uh, let's see. I've got to refresh the screen. I think. Um, if we pick that new model. And compare it against the old one. There's a ridge trap merge. Um, usually, when you're doing this primary secondary, it's it's often easier to get a sense for the comparison if you uh, pick the one with fewer KCs as the primary and the one with more KCs as the secondary. So that's what I've done here, and we'll see when I click on all data. Uh, and it displays the learning curve, get a sense for, probably won't be much different overall because most of the model is identical. In fact, there's a green line on top of that blue line that you can hardly see any difference on. In some ways, that's a good thing because we reduced parameters, yet we didn't change the fit. If I click just on trapezoid, we might see a little bit of variation. Yeah, this green line, which is the original model that has three KCs, is moving around a little bit, but it's not particularly tracking the data any better than the other one. Um, and uh, we could go look at the performance profiler too to see this comparison, but we'll leave it at that for now.